Hi everyone and welcome back to the Zombies. The first mission of Act 2, Same Day Delivery, requires you to complete a cargo delivery contract, destroy the healer that chases you, and then destroy the LTV you used in the contract. Worth noting that these requirements don't have to be done in one go, so feel free to spread them over multiple contracts if you want to. Obviously, the main part of this mission is destroying the healer. And while it can be done in a squad using the mounted 50 cal turret on your LTV, a much easier way is to hide your LTV where the healer cannot hit it and then use your regular gun to kill the chopper. You can use larger buildings, warehouses and hangars to do that, but I find it easiest to drive into one of the tunnels on the map, leave the LTV there and then kill the healer. It gets extremely confused by the stationary target it can't hit, so it just hovers low above the tunnel doing essentially nothing. Don't bother using any specialized launches to kill the chopper. All the peelers, trellers and so on are shockingly ineffective against it. Rather, just use whatever gun you brought and it will go down in flames in no time at all. Just watch out for the zombies attracted by the noise so you don't get killed accidentally. Leaving the LTV unoccupied for too long may cause it to explode and fail the contract, so if you feel like killing the chopper takes a bit too much time, get back into LTV for a second and then repeat, it will reset the timer. Overall, just a blue punch one gun gets the job done extremely easily. Once you took care of the chopper, complete the contract by reaching the destination. Feel free to run over a bunch of zombies on the way, since you need to destroy the car afterwards, might as well make that job a bit easier by accumulating some damage on it. Once done, the mission will complete and the next mission will be activated automatically. The first mission in tier 2 of Act 2, the Safe Cracker, requires you to complete the raid stash contract without drill getting stuck, kill 30 zombies in the process and exfil with the cryo freeze formula. The mission is quite straightforward, pick up the raid stash you like. Any thread zone works, so if you want to make it as easy as possible, do it in low thread zone. In order to prevent the drill from getting stuck, make sure to stay close to the safe so the progress keep going up constantly. Shoot the zombies, there's always more than 30 of them come into the contract, so that condition is really easy to complete too. If for some reason you don't complete all requirements in one go, don't worry, the progress carries over and does not get reset. Once all conditions are met, the contract reward rift will have the cryo freeze formula for you to pick up. Exfil with it and the mission will be finished for you. The second mission in tier 2 of Act 2, the Ascension, requires you to use the redeploy drone to travel between thread zones. It is as simple as it sounds. Just find the redeploy drone icon on the map that is reasonably close to a border between two thread zones, get to it, jump, open your parachute and fly towards a different zone. As soon as you cross the border, the mission will complete mid-air. Your random perk reward will spawn on the ground just where you cross the line, so don't forget to go back for it. The third tier 2 mission of Act 2, the Merc Cleanup, requires you to kill 30 Mercs in their camps and loot 3 Merc camp caches. As usual, the easiest way to clear the camp and get the kills is to take an LTV, roll up to the camp, keeping some distance and then use the 50 cal turret to get the kills. Once the camp is clear, go to the cache and take something from it. You don't have to keep your loot, so feel free to just throw it away afterwards. Annoyingly, if any other player has opened their cache already, looting it will not count for you. So, when playing in a squad, agree with your teammates that it has to be you who gets the chest. Same applies to other players, so if you see someone is already attacking the camp you aim at, it might be better to just find yourself another one. Obviously, doing it in the low threat zone is much easier, and the camps do respawn after some time, so if you can't find a suitable one on the map, give it 5-10 minutes and check again, there should be a plenty. Once you loot your third cache, the mission will complete and the next one will activate automatically. The fourth mission in tier 2 of Act 2, the Reaper, requires you to kill 3 harvester orbs and collect 15 items they drop. Harvester orbs spawn all over the map with multiple spawn points in each of the threat zones. Guys at WZ Hub GG put together a really nice map of orb locations, so I recommend using it in your hunt. Note that orbs are not always present in all of the locations, but multiple of them spawn on the map each time and they do respawn after being killed, so you shouldn't have a problem finding one. Once you locate an orb you like, go ahead and start shooting it. 
each time you hit it, the orb will bounce in a random direction and leave 50 essence on the ground. It doesn't seem to make any difference what the rarity of your weapon is or punch level, it's the amount of hits that's required to take it down rather than actual damage. If you don't shoot the orb for some time, like when you get distracted by zombies trying to eat you, the orb will try to open the portal and escape. Shoot it to prevent it from leaving, otherwise it'll be gone and you'll have to find yourself another one. Once dead, the orb will leave a bunch of essence vials, usually an ether tool and some random goodies like ammo mods, guns and so on. Don't worry much about picking up all the small vials it drops when you hit it, there'll be enough items at their death point for you to complete the mission. Repeat it three times and that's really all you need to do here. The mission will complete and the next one will activate automatically. The fifth mission in tier 2 of Act 2, the Guardian Angel, requires you to heal operators 20 times with Healing Aura field upgrade. Of course, make sure to equip Healing Aura before you infill, as you cannot change the field upgrade mid-round. The Healing Aura being a slow recharge takes 48 zombie kills to get ready, so straight off the bat get to killing some Zeds. It doesn't matter how you get the kills, ranged or melee, regular or special zombies, vehicle kills or deadbolt turrets, all of them count towards your recharge. The only two exceptions are insta kills and nuke bonuses. Kills with them do not recharge your field upgrade. Important thing about healing aura is that it works on all players within about 50 meters radius, whether those players are in your squad or not. So all kills, including yourself and any other players in the area, will count for your progression. To make the mission easier and quicker to complete, once your healing aura is charged, look at the map and find some other squad. Grab a car and drive to their location. The more people there are, the better. For instance, if you are in a squad of three and you get another three-man team, that's six operators healed at once. The players do not need to be down or injured for the heal to count, as long as they are in the range, you are good. Also, if at any point while charged you see a full power bonus on the ground, use your aura before picking it up, even if you are all alone. That's basically a free progression for you, since full power will recharge you immediately. As soon as you hit your 20th heal, the mission will complete and the next one will activate automatically. The last tier 2 mission of Act 2, Shocked, requires you to stun 25 regular and 5 special zombies with the Dead Wire mod. This sounds quite easy and compared to most of other ammo mod missions, it really is. But first, we need to acquire the mod itself. Of course, if you have a schematic for the Dead Wire, you all sort it. This schematic drops from contracts in medium threat zone, but it can be quite a chore to get. If you don't have a schematic, you'll have to find a mod on the map. All the usual looting places are going to be your target here, with ether caches, both large and small, being the highest chance for the ammo mod. Since every ether nest has at least one of those caches, and infested strongholds always have multiple, they are your best looting locations to get the mod you need. Once you have the mod and applied it to your gun, start hunting the zombies. I'd suggest go into the low threat exfil zone for this, since it spawns a large number of regular zombies and quite a few manglers, but obviously any special zombie you see on your way is a great chance to progress the mission. Remember, you only need a stun to progress, you don't have to get a kill, so hit and run somewhere in the medium threat works really well for this. Word of caution though. HVT targets cannot be stunned, so just grabbing a bunch of HVT contracts in low threat will not help you here. I usually try to concentrate on special zombies first, and then just keep killing regulars until the requirement is complete. If you come across a dead wire turret circuit, those work as well, but they are not very effective, as they only tend to stun a few zombies before they run out. Once you got the required number of stuns, the mission will complete and the next one will activate for you automatically. The third tier of Act 2 opens up with the more firepower mission, in which we need to pack a punch your weapon to level 2 and then kill 75 regular and one special zombie with it. The description really says it all here. Punch your gun up at any pack a punch machine in medium or high threat zone or using a refined ether crystal and then go killing. If you happen to already have a punch 2 or higher weapon when the mission activates, all your kills will still count, but you will have to punch another gun up to satisfy the first requirement. 
This doesn't have to be done in the same deployment though, the progress carries on, so you can simply finish all the kills in one run and once you punch your gun to the level 2 in another run, the mission will be done. As usual, the easiest way to accumulate the kills is low threat exfil zone, since it spawns tons of regular zombies as well as multiple manglers. Even starting from zero, you should be able to collect all the kills necessary within one or two exfil calls. Once you complete all the requirements, the mission will be finished and the next one will activate automatically. The second mission in Tier 3 of Act 2, the Bounty Hunter, requires you to complete a high value target contract for a mangler, mimic and a disciple. The mission itself is straightforward, but since there's no way to tell which target you'll get when picking up a contract, might require a bit of repetition to complete. Important note that while contracts for mimics and manglers can be found in all three zones, HVT disciples are only present in medium and high threat zone, and since HVT variants of special zombies are considerably tougher than their normal equivalents, some preparation is highly advised before rushing in. In terms of order, it makes sense to start your contracts in medium threat zone, since even if you don't get a disciple in the first try, you'll at least cross a mangler or a mimic off the list. Another good strategy is to loot some turret circuits first and try your luck in the red zone, as disciple contracts are reasonably common there. Once you clear the disciple, you can go into the low threat zone for some easy kills on manglers and mimics if you still need any. I highly recommend having an epic grade weapon with at least punch 2 level before you take on medium threat HVTs, at least if playing solo. If you do not have any epic tools left, consider buying an epic or legendary weapon off the wall in game, this might make a difference between you completing the mission and smashing your controller. Once you clear all three required HVT types, the mission will complete and the next mission will activate for you automatically. The last tier 3 mission of Act 2, the Essence of Ether, requires you to collect three essence samples from locations on the map. While the mission itself is not difficult, it does have a very annoying problem with it. If you progressed into this mission during the deployment by completing the previous mission, none of the items you need to complete it are interactable and it's therefore impossible to finish it that way. Hopefully it gets fixed in the future, but as of now, you must have the mission selected at the time of infill in order to be able to finish it. Now, over to the mission itself. All the samples can be collected in any order, so you choose one depending on the location you spawned in. I'll show them in the same order they are listed in the mission description though. The first sample container in Hamza Bazaar is located at the top right corner of H6 quadrant, on the east side of the map in low threat zone. Look for a small booth right in the center of the market area. The container is inside on the counter. You need to interact with it in order to progress the mission. The second container in Rostova Shops is located at the top left corner of D3 quadrant, on the west side of the map in medium threat zone, across the highway and down south from Levin Resort. Look for a large squarish building. The container is on the table on the ground floor. The last container in Quadri Shopping Center is located at the bottom right corner of C6 Quadrant, in the southwest part of the map in low threat zone. Look for a small diner building in a cluster of larger buildings around. The container will be on the counter in plain sight. As soon as you interact with the last container in whatever order you choose, the mission will complete and the next one will activate automatically. The only tier 4 mission in Act 2, the Heist, requires you to complete an Ether Extractor contract and collect an Essence container afterwards. As the description suggests, the mission is absolutely straightforward. To make it really easy, obtain an LTV first, either by finding one on the map or by completing a delivery cargo contract. Then find an Ether Extractor contract on the map, ideally in the low threat zone as that spawns less rockets and fewer enemies than medium threat ones. Upon picking up the contract, drive closer to the rockets and wait for the reinforcement healers to start coming. Use your LTV turret to destroy one or more of those, then proceed to eliminate the mercs with it. Remember to act reasonably fast, as you have a total of 2.5 minutes to complete the mission. Clear area around one rocket, dismount and run up to it, then interact with the panel on the rocket to initiate self-destruction sequence. Repeat the process for the remaining rockets and once the whole contract is complete, an essence container, similar to those you found in Essence of Ether mission, will spawn right next to the reward rift. Interacting with it will complete the mission and activate the next one automatically. 
The first tier 5 mission of Act 2, the Mind Control, requires you to turn 20 zombies using the Brain Rot Ammo mod and then let those turned zombies get 25 kills for you. This mission is definitely the easiest of all Ammo mod related missions that you'll encounter since every successful turn correctly registers and every Brain Rot kill counts for your progression. Acquiring a Brain Rot mod also tends to be easier than other mods since the schematic for it drops from low threat zone contracts and is reasonably easy to obtain. If you do not have a schematic, you'll have to resort to a usual looting run. The best locations to find ammo mods in general are ether nests and infested strongholds in low threat zone, as well as ether caches, large and small, anywhere else on the map. Once you have an ammo mod, apply it to a weapon and go around shooting zombies. Once you successfully turn a zombie or a hellhound, let them run around for a bit, getting kills for you. A usual exfil zone farming works well here, but it's not necessary. I'd recommend just going ahead with your usual run and let the mission complete itself naturally. Worth noting here is that brain rot conversions caused by an elemental pop perk also count perfectly, so technically you can complete this mission without ever getting an ammo mod, though that might take significantly longer time. Once you complete both requirements, the mission will finish and the next one will activate automatically. The second tier 5 mission of Act 2, the Frostbite, requires you to stun 50 zombies and freeze 5 mimics with the Frost Blast field upgrade. As for all field upgrade missions, make sure to equip the Frostbite before you infill as you can't change the upgrade mid-round. Frostbite requires 24 zombie kills to fully recharge and its range is not too great. I recommend clearing out Mimic's requirement first and then dealing with the regular zombies. Luckily it's quite easy to find Mimic's on the map. In the low threat zone there's usually one in every infested stronghold and it will reveal itself while you're trying to clear the stronghold. Even better though is medium threat zone. Two Mimic's can usually be found chilling on the roof of any infested stronghold and can easily be aggroed by shooting close by or even driving past the place. Aggro them and make them chase you so the two are close together. Then run up to them or let them grab you and freeze them. Once done you can either kill them or flee. You only need freezing for it to count, kills are not necessary. Unfortunately you can't keep freezing the same mimic over and over again, so you'll need to go through multiple strongholds to clear all five. You also have a reasonable chance of meeting a Mimic or two in the medium threat zone just in the wild or in locations like top of the high rise building and other high loot areas. Annoyingly though, HVT Mimics from the contracts do not count, regardless of the threat zone, so don't waste your time picking up elimination contracts to get Mimics that way. Once Mimics are all done, proceed to low threat exfil zone. Use the zombies there to recharge, then kite a nice train of regular zombies hop into the middle of the crowd and activate your field upgrade. Getting 50 total will take a few blasts, but it's reasonably quick exercise overall. Once you complete all requirements, the mission will finish and the next one will activate automatically. The last tier 5 mission of Act 2, the Exterminator, requires you to complete a spore control contract within 2.5 minutes and exfil with the rare ether tool schematic. This is easy to do solo and even more so in a squad. Contracts in a low threat zone are the easiest, so I recommend sticking with that for a mission. Once you accept the contract, rush to the toolbox containing the inhibitors. If you are playing solo, grab the six of them at once, so you don't have to come back for a refill. Once you have the inhibitors, run around the contract area dropping one at each of the spores. Make sure to land the inhibitor in the misty circle surrounding it, so it works properly. Once you did a round with all six eggs, Run around again, this time shooting each of the eggs. They will turn red by the time you did the first round. This way the contract will be done very very quickly. Try to ignore the zombies as much as you can so you don't waste time killing them and can concentrate on the spores. Using the RGL makes it even easier as single grenade hit kills the spore. Another note is that eggs crack faster with each inhibitor you place next to them. So it is a viable strategy to drop two or three inhibitors, crack the egg and then move on to the next one. But really, just doing a full circle twice is generally faster, unless you have a particularly tricky landscape. When doing it in a squad, just spread the spores evenly between all members and you'll be done in under a minute. Once you complete the contract, the reward reef for it will contain a rare ether tool schematic, but only for the players that have the mission activated. Pick it up and head over to the exfil to complete the mission. 
It's time for the story mission in Act 2, The Shepherd, and as usual we begin with the prep. In terms of weapons, the choice here is the same as for Act 1 story, NRGL. At the minimum, you want your RGL at blue rarity and punch 2 level, but epic rarity and punch 3 upgrade will make you run an absolute breeze. To accompany the RGL, you absolutely need a PhD flopper and speed caller perks. Other perks are welcome too, especially Juggernaut and Stamina Up, but it's the PhD and the speed that are essential. On top of all that, you want a selfie and a spare and several sentry guns. Those are not absolutely required, but they too make the run much easier, especially if you have three or more of them. Luckily, sentries are cheap at just 2k a pop, so they shouldn't be an issue. Whether to take a secondary weapon at all is totally up to you. I usually just bring the RGL as it's more than sufficient and pick something up on the map if I see a nice high rarity weapon. Once you feel like you are ready, head over to the mission icon marked Shepherd and call the Axfield Chopper at the Red Flare. Board the Hilo to be taken to a walled off version of Levin Resort where all the action is taking place this time. After a short flight, you'll be able to leave the Hilo. Use your parachute to fly towards the main resort building, leaning left. Once landed, proceed on foot, keeping to the left side of the main entrance. Two mission markers will point you to the zip lines in the main building, but you don't have to go to them. In fact, there's a whole lot of mercenaries right where the mission markers are, and you can avoid fighting them altogether by using zip lines on the outside of the building. There are mercs on the outside too, so try not to rush too much as they hit quite hard and can melt your armor very, very quickly. Take out any that threaten you as you make your way to the first zip. Once up on the first level, there'll be two mercenary snipers who are quite annoying. You can kill them or just run around the corner for the main zip line that takes you all the way up. Make sure you are fully plated and your weapon is reloaded before taking the zip. Once you get on the roof, you immediately face a number of mercenaries and they will likely be quite unhappy about your visit. Get your RGL to work until the immediate threat is removed. Don't bother trying to clear the whole area completely as new reinforcements will keep arriving non-stop. You'll find yourself next to one of the same sites that you need to destroy. Run up to it and interact to place an explosive. Then run towards another one using the structure in the middle as your cover. Keep killing the mercs that push you and make it to the second sam. There's also a deadbolt turret on the roof too, so if you have any turret circuits and fancy it, use one and it will keep the whole area clear for you, but I personally find it faster to just blow the same sides up quickly and then bail. Once the second explosive is planted, jump off the roof and parachute over to the front yard. Zakaev will talk some trash to you and shortly after a landing zone for the neutralizer will be revealed and surprise, you are already there. A few mercs will spawn shortly, followed by a couple of zombies. Kill them quickly as the reinforcement healer with more mercs is coming already. Once you deal with that threat, a large horde of zombies pops up and you need to take care of them as well. RGL should splatter all that very very quickly and easily. Go 
Once you've cleared the area, you have an option to activate the ACV. There's also usually, though not always, but usually there's a buy station nearby. You can use it to buy any additional selfies or sentries or plates that you need. Once ready, activate the ACV, jump on top of it and put your sentries down, leaving one in reserve. The trip in front of you is longer and has more enemies than any escort contract, so the sentries will expire somewhere at the end of it. Ride on top of the ACV with your RGL at hand. Regular zombies cannot really damage the ACV as long as it keeps moving, so don't worry much about them. Concentrate your fire on special zombies like manglers and disciples and mercenaries as well. Be a bit mindful with your RGL fire as it can and will damage your own sentries, so land your shots further away from the ACV. Try to stay on your ACV as much as possible, since the moment ACV stops, zombies will immediately start hammering it, doing some crazy damage and you really want to avoid it. If you're on it though, they can barely scratch it and if you go down, the ACV keeps moving and zombies actually de-aggro, giving you quite a bit of a breather. Either way, stay on the vehicle, jump off to collect plates and ammo, jump back and keep spamming your RGL. That's the gist here. The whole drive takes almost 4 minutes as you go from the Levin Resort front yard, around the building, through the construction zone behind it, to eventually arrive on the lawn by the beach, riddled with ether crystals. Once the ACV stops there, the option to activate the neutralizer appears. Doing so initiates the charging sequence and, of course, causes a new horde of zombies to spawn along with a mega abomination. Good news here is the mag is also tier 2 just like all other zombies in the mission, so it has significantly reduced health and overall weaker than its red zone variants. You may also notice a deadbolt turret not far away, don't start celebrating as the cake is a lie, it's just a mimic waiting for you to fall for a trick. Neutralizer charging process only takes a minute, during which you need to make sure it's not destroyed. Spamming grenades at and around ACV with your RGL works really good for that purpose. Once charging is complete, you'll be asked to detonate the neutralizer. Run up to it and interact with the panel at the backside and the detonation will kill any zombies that are still alive and the mission ends with the cinematic. As before, you can't skip the cinematic otherwise you'll fail your run. Hope this was helpful, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.